come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, the movie review and talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, because we're on a quest to take over the world. One podcast listener at a time. Is this? Is it you this week? Are we taking you over? <laughs> That's right. Let us know. Let Please. us know if you've been taken over. Yeah. Please. These are the internet radio superstars. I don't know if I'm very comfortable with taking people, <laughs> taking over, people over individually. Like, you have no just... choice now. This is... <laughs> um, but anyway, Holly. <laughs> Sean. <laughs> Michaela. And I'm Colin. Ha- get on the train, Holly. <laughs> in your ears, <laughs> taking over your brain. Oh, yeah. okay. okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, tonight have you been, we- watching, that, have you been <laughs> like- watching that new that new cult leader special on Netflix? Yeah. No, I've been watching Congress. And no. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, no, we're that, like, it's we're happening like, there, too. We're yeah. like Star oh, yeah, Trek with the sense. little bugs they drop on people's oh, ears. Oh, so, you know, I was going to mm-hmm. say it's brain, everyone brain damage. We're brain damaging into people yeah. like, like oh, Aylmer. So we are damaged. So thank you for participating in this experiment of uh, extraterrestrial uh, hmm. uh, importance. Yeah, there's aliens now, guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a confirmed. Like, I mean, what's his sitch? Like, is he is he like six foot? I mean, I might be into this alien. There you we'll go. We're going to have to stay tuned to the end of the show to find out. But first of all, we watched the movie that was chosen by <laughs> Michaela. Mm. What do we watch tonight? Insomnia. Ooh, from the year. 2002. 2002? Yes. Really? Yeah. Shit. Huh. Yeah. What did I you was think? Old. I know the like man's had an entire career. No, no, no. I was. <laughs> damn. Because yeah. that's not like, you know, like, all right, 2000s. And then you think about it, like, that's, that's really close to 1999. Yeah. 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 Shit. All right. Yeah. Uh, directed by Christopher Nolan. Ooh. Classy Man, enough to join tonight. Nolan. Yes. Ooh, classy wow. filmmaker. This is highbrow. I mean, next it we're going to be highbrow. doing Martin Scorsese. Well, we've already never. done like Woody Allen movies. So, all right. So. Oh, is that hot? Well, never mind. <laughs> Not going to lie. There might be a Scorsese movie on my list. Oh, oh, shit. There should be. Yeah. yeah, yeah there's yeah. a couple. One. Yeah, yeah, I can think of a few. There's one on my yeah. list. Yeah. Like, we're not watching The Passion of the Christ no, around here. No, 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 no. No, it'd be the, the temptation. Even though it, last even though it is. Yeah. <laughs> or one the passion of is Mel Gibson. Oh, no, not the passion. <laughs> last temptation. Last temptation. <laughs> We're not watching either. No, we could watch the passion because that's a torture porn movie. It yep. is. Oh, but I don't want to watch that. the Judeo Christian it would make massacre. Sense. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would make sense for us to actually watch it. <laughs> yeah, movie, actually, so. it would. Yeah. yeah. That's right. <laughs> Stay tuned. Um, Starring. Oh, <laughs> right. This Starring movie. Al Pacino. Al Pacino. Yes. A 60 some year old Al Pacino. That yeah, is right. Old and was old 20 years ago. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Who else stars in this Hillary movie? Hillary Swank. The Swank? Mm-hmm. Yep. Star of season six of 90210. Right. Uh, yes. <laughs> star of what? Season six of 90210. Was she? Yeah. Oh, I missed that. Before yeah. Boys Don't Cry, because this yeah. is the one she did, I think, right after yeah. Boys Don't Cry, right? She's she won the Oscar, mm-hmm. right, for Boys Don't Cry? Boys Don't Cry. She, was at least yeah. she got it for a Million Dollar Baby, I she, thought. She's got two. Mm-hmm. She got yeah. two. Yeah. Good yeah. for her. So yeah. Boys Don't Cry and Million Dollar Baby. Also, she was the next Karate Kid. But moving on. Right. She sure was. <laughs> She's yes. also in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I missed oh, man, all of her TV appearances, yeah. Yeah. I guess. In the she's, movie. Oh, she, shit. She's the one that says, get yeah, out of my facial. Yep, you're yeah, right. Yeah, her. she's the Cordelia. Uh, oh, my God. Vampire. I got to go back and watch yeah. Buffy. I love that movie. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, and, and Paul, Paul Rubens. Rubens oh, yes. oh, my hero. Yeah. yeah, that's my... Ah, that yeah. was my favorite role he did. I know everyone's a Pee Wee fan, but that was my favorite. That's my favorite, too. That was my favorite, yeah. Amelin. Or Amelin the vampire, Something right? Like and yeah, Rutger Hauer was the oh, Rutger Hauer was the, wannabe. I love yeah. that movie. It's so good. Um, anyway, sorry. Right, and anyway, it's not me. Every, every time he kicks the wall, that's yeah. the thing. Right. Like, uh, 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 uh. It's so goddamn funny. <laughs> and who else is in this? <laughs> Robin Williams. Yeah. 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 Williams. So this was, I guess, at the time considered a uh, departure for Robin Williams. Absolutely. Right? Mm. Yeah, because one hour photo, when did that. After that was this. it was after this. Okay, yeah, yeah. that's his other like weird hunting? role. Before this, I was say, before yeah. this. Okay, so yeah, yeah, so I guess he was doing serious. He stuff. delved I mean, into like, drama, but he's like this. cuddly in Good Will Hunting. And this right. Patch is, Adams is yeah. one year before. That's got to be before that's this. That's before this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Awakenings. Um, but this is like villainy. What dreams yes. right? yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Like he did serious roles, but then he did like bad guy roles. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. The only other one, right? Death, Death to Smoochie. Smoochie. Yes. <laughs> one, yeah. Well, in August Rush, he's like a weird pedophile that rounds up kids. So, oh, 
that he that movie four of them. would not you would not think that I went. Oh my is god, I movie. forgot yeah, about that. that cowboy Rush? hat and has all the earrings. Yeah, I totally yeah. forgot yes. about that. Carrie I'm, Russell, Carrie Russell, Russell and Jonathan Myers. Myers. Yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah. That I was a weird movie. about that's a Freddie really Highmore was the kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And really he's like, yeah, movie. he like rounds up the street urchin children and like. Oh my god, I them. For, it's very weird. Jake I like Delilah. blocked yeah. that from my memory. Yeah, crazy. Because it was a weird movie. It was a it weird was a, movie. It felt like a movie that was like the first AI movie. I bet you, because everything about that movie felt slightly off and not real. There, yeah, like it didn't feel like a normal reality. There was you, a weird. You, you time. would not know. Uh, magical Robin Williams elements. was rounding up kids as a pedophile right? in the poster for this movie. I know. This is why I never yeah. thought it was a thing. Yeah. Like, what is this movie? <laughs> yes. He there like, was there was a weird time in movies when everything felt like a fever dream. Yes, and that and movie, like August oof. Rush, followed, um, I've always thought Center Stage felt like yeah, that too. Absolutely. Look at the like facial hair in Robin Williams yeah. and August Rush. You gotta see the picture. Oh, that oh, screams yeah. pedophile. Yeah, look at him in the cowboy yeah. hat with the earrings. I forgot about that. Yeah, it's just, he like crazy. he like controls these street kids. Yeah, and they all have to go out and like perform for money, and then he takes like almost all their money. What year <laughs> was just, that? Man? Like two thousand seven. It's eight? like that weird subplot in Pinocchio. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah that's I mean, the other creepy Robin Williams performance people uh, don't know about. Yeah. yeah. But he's so good at he's it. He's so too. good at it. I remember he was such uh, a fucking good actor. I think oh Christopher God. Nolan said that, you know, like he he had cast Robin Williams. I can't even remember what the role was that he cast him mm-hmm. from. You know, it was uh, something like uh, Goodwill Hunting or mm-hmm. you know something but he was like I think it was like Robin was always you know, like there's never a moment when you're watching the dailies where he was like breaking performance. He was mm-hmm. always he was like, I think he, we found something like he tapped into something that, you know, was like really good. Well, that, that was the thing with Robin Williams is no matter what he was doing, he was on mm-hmm. yeah. like whether yeah. he was being comedic or serious. Mm-hmm. He was on all the time. Dedication. Yeah. He was only 63. I know. Die. Yeah. That's, That's really sad. Crazy. That was, you know, people always say, like, what was, like, the loss that hit you hard? Robin yeah, Williams man. hit me hard. We deserve so many more years of Robin Williams. Oh, my Williams. God. That man was an angel on earth. Mm-hmm. Well, he, he was, really I think, was. like, I mean, like, it was, I don't know, certifiable. Man always struck me as, like, he, that guy's a genius. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, his comic, 100%. his timing, the speed of his rapid right. fire. I mean, like, mm-hmm. that's right. what I remember was Robin Williams' you know, stand up performances. Right. Yes. You know? Yeah. And those early, like, uh, Good Morning Vietnam, you know, because mm-hmm. that's basically just him, like, ad-libbing and yes. being hilarious, yeah. you know. But he kind of has this charm that makes you feel good about yourself. Yeah. That is yeah. kind of, like, his it factor yeah. that makes him like, stand I can, apart. Like, I can see him being, like, you know, they always ask the question, like, who would you invite to dinner? Like, mm-hmm. three people. Oh, I can great. S- I can see him being in, like, my wholesome trio was always Mr. Rogers and Dolly Parton. Mm-hmm. I can see him being the third in my dinner. Yeah. Right. Like, he'd he's be, just so wholesome. He'd be, he, right. He'd be funny, but he, then he'd talk to you in a heartfelt way mm-hmm. about something yeah. that you liked. Like, mm-hmm. these are all the feelings we got from Robin Williams over the years. Mm-hmm. God damn it. Mm-hmm. Well, who knows? Who knew that he would play such a great uh, villain? Yes. <laughs> right? Right? Fantastic. Because um, he can access it, Colin. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. that's that was his special ability. Well, there's to also. Be able to access all this stuff. There's still, like, a streak of humor to this performance, though, because this character is very, like, snarky and sarcastic right. and, like. And you don't bold. hate him. Yeah. Right. Like, He's a that's writer. The thing. Yeah. You don't hate him. Mm. You hate but him for murder. He has that. But you don't um, hate him. But I don't hate there's, him. <laughs> and I think this is, you know, it goes with casting Robin Williams, right? It's like that you know, because you've seen Robin Williams and you've seen him like manic. Right. So yep. you know the mania is there. Yeah. And this is like him, like, contain- you can almost see it in his mouth. You know, mm-hmm. when he talks, like, knowing who he is and the other stuff that mm-hmm. he's done, it's like he's caging it you know mm-hmm. in this performance and he has I mean, a lot of clenched jaw yeah. talking in this yeah. movie yeah yeah and and like you know a neutral face or you know it's like but yeah you know, like it, everything's happening yeah. underneath you're just like there's so much spinning through his head <laughs> would right you now. guys be would you guys hate me if i brought n- mrs doubtfire because we need to talk about how unhinged that movie <laughs> yes i mean yeah like watching that movie as an adult is crazy it's compared to watching it a movie that you could not make now <laughs> no, no hell no because like at the first instance, it's like maybe maybe dad needs to go to the mental hospital for a little bit. Right. End of movie, like right? You know, it's it's but, too, oh, yeah. but it turns into such a <laughs> such a heartfelt. Oh my god! Like it was on the other day in that 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 last monologue that yeah. he gives oh as they're all leaving. Yes, especially being uh, <laughs> uh, um, uh, a man of divorce with a child, yeah. like tears all the time <laughs> that, there's that weird anti-smoking theme throughout that movie too smoking. yeah it, it's it's a weird preachy part of that movie that what you the foul way about. for a bird to die <laughs> my lungs are blackened i love that movie 
Well, the other, nobody don't smoke. The other you're uh, just you're just proving this, my point that I should bring it. <laughs> I mean, you I would enjoy the hell out of it. Right? Yeah. I'm just saying. I like. I, I might I, need it, to bring it. It was like on the TV the other day, and uh, and I made everyone watch it. I'm just like, and then we Did all. You? Well, no, yeah, it was like, oh, no, we're watching this. And then the part with the Raptor app came on, and then me and my brother just did every word from it out loud to everybody yeah. who was in the room. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I do not know Mrs. Doubtfire that well. Oh, oh my God. I've seen it. it. I remember the hairy legs on the bus scene. <laughs> not the, well, like, uh, before, before we started recording, we were talking about, like, earworms that are just, like, there for years. Mm. The entire scene when they're, like, trying different faces on him, and he's, like, Barbara Streisand, and then he's, right. like, yeah. Or, yeah. yeah Don't like, tell me not to live, just sit and put up. Life's <laughs> candy and a son's a ball that of butter. That whole scene has been stuck in my head for, like, 20 years. Wow. I'm it's learning. Not, it's learning not working. Things. You need to go older. Uh, Shelly Winters <laughs> older or Shelly McLean older? What's the difference? Some scotch tape and red hair dye. <laughs> I bet right. you. It's, okay. I, know it's, I know it word for word. I'm bringing it. I bet Fuck you it. that movie made like a bajillion dollars, right? That movie had to have made like, I think I'm it curious. Was, yeah, it, it made a, It was a big hit. Yeah. It was a big yeah, yeah. hit. There's that. I just love when comedies make a shit ton oh of God. money. I'm always like, why? Why, yeah. why, why? Because it's so rare. It's yeah. so yeah. funny. Hey, Lou! But there's that whole meme where they're talking about like, how did she not suspect? And they're like, you have, and when when you're going to accuse your nanny of being your ex-husband dressed up, you better <laughs> you have be a be thousand sure. percent yeah, you gotta be sure. sure. Uh, it made $441 million. Yeah, Hell, right. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Because it's awesome. great. I I can't believe I took us on this tangent. I'm yeah. sorry. I know. That was, just, that was our Mrs. I mean, Doubtfire. Yeah, I'm sorry. So, yeah, uh, so 11 awful. minutes <laughs> in, we, yeah. we saw this movie called Insomnia. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, and I guess, you know, obviously, in which you know no one dresses Christopher woman. Nolan no. is, right? And we're going to spoil it. So yeah. if you care yeah. about the reveals, yeah. go watch it and come back. What mm-hmm. are we coming off of Chris Nolan at this So point? the only thing. So yeah, Memento. Is the first the mm-hmm. one so, well, it was following and then Memento and then oh. this movie. I was oh, like, wow. what are okay. you mean? What are we coming off? No. Oppenheimer. <laughs> well, yeah, no, no. But what is, well, I guess, what is Chris Nolan yeah. coming off? And right? this yeah. was his. Wow. Up until Oppenheimer, this was his last R-rated movie. Everything after this oh. until Oppenheimer was PG-13. Oh, wow. Yeah, but this yeah. was also like his gateway into Warner Brothers. Mm-hmm. And somehow, yeah. and God bless whoever the Warner Brothers executive was, who said, you know, the guy who did Insomnia, we mm-hmm. should uh, talk to him about doing Batman. Yes. I mean, Love you it. know, because you see how that goes now. All these Give directors kind of get like, into DC yeah, Marvel or Marvel. Yeah. Whoever it was. But Christopher Nolan made like his own version of Batman. And it's, I don't know. That's my like definitive bat. Everyone's been chasing that since. <laughs> yeah, any, yeah, it yes, really was. Any like, director that has made a, a comic book movie that has any sort of auteurship has been trying to have their Dark yeah, Knight movie, and no one has been able to replicate it. Yeah, yeah. And we had said he did a movie called Following. Before that, mm-hmm. um, this movie is a remake, actually. Yes. Mm, yeah. Um, and I saw the original before I saw this, actually, because oh, wow. uh, a foreign remake. Yeah, a yeah. 19, from 1997, Norway. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that one has stolen it's, Skarsgård. Yeah, it. it's got oh. some darker stuff in Can it. You see it. Yeah. If it's Norwegian, of course. It's, <laughs> so like they like uh, but I think some of the things they changed were for the better. Like okay. one of the things they changed is in so in this one he intimidates the girl by like driving erratically. He like sexually assaults her in the oh. other one. Yeah. And uh Good choice, there's Nolan. like more rape in that. Oof, and then um yeah. the dog that he shoots in this movie is alive in the original. So of he course. actually kills a dog instead of shooting it already. So yeah. yeah, good choices. Nolan. Yeah, he there, made upgrades yeah. in my opinion. Well, they, yeah. Right. Yeah. This version makes the Al Pacino character more of like I mean, I know that, you know, the whole movie deals about a, a nebulous moral uh dilemma. Yeah. But the Stellan Skarsgård version of it is like a skeevy <laughs> motherfucker. I, I think saying, yes, not like, as gray. It's, it's not it's internal gritty. affairs. It's like he's up there because he had sex with like a witness yeah. or something like that. And yeah. there's like a a, 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 a sexual deviancy underlay oh, to his okay. character. There's a lot like the of like threat. implied sexual assault and cover up of that. So oh, okay. Yeah. So with this, they help your characters. No. Like if there was some, it's like if you're gonna have if there's some moral play with putting bad guys away. I think right. obviously we can accept that I more. Just, yeah, it's a more unpleasant movie to watch yeah. because yeah. of that. But I, I would yeah. say that also kind of you know like at least at the time that was the '90s, and I think like you know historically, foreign films 
are kind of willing to portray their protagonists as more gray. Yeah. Where Definitely. American audience oh, is yeah. kind of like white and black. Mm-hmm. You know, they like the good guy and the bad guy, you know, mm-hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. So <laughs> it's um, easier for us. We don't like to think hard. Yeah. 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 Nuance is hard. <laughs> because then you don't have questions of like, do I like this guy despite, yeah. you know, like all these other things, you know, yeah. uh, I mean, foreign films are not escapist be. cinema. Right. Yeah. 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 I was just going to say that's the problem with yeah. it. Yeah. I was going to say, to be fair, most of us watch movies for escapism. Yeah. So, right. Yeah, yeah. We're right. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, yeah. he, I get is, it. This is not that. Yeah. 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 Well, um, and I don't think the the character that Hillary Swank plays in the remake uh, is as prominent in the no. foreign film. OK, because I thought that was another change that they made. Yeah, right? they definitely upped her character, which like. This is, I love Christopher Nolan. We gotta call him out a little bit because he's terrible at female characters. Like mm. he has to murder all of them. Like he yeah. can't have a and and that's usually the emotional catalyst for the lead character is what happens to the female character. And I'm kind yeah. of tired of watching it in his movies. I it's was like, pleasantly surprised that Hillary Swank lived. <laughs> yeah, because this is a remake. He didn't write it. Yeah, because he didn't write it. If he did, she probably would have been the that's the one true. that was shot instead. That's true. you know. Well, she um, survived in the wait. Don't, don't does she survive in the original? I think so. Okay, I wasn't sure. Maybe I think that, so, if but, that's how he gets out. I can't remember because in the original, he lives and he like yeah. he goes back to yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's it's a bleaker ending. Yeah, you just it's like a the whole movie. Oh, I like that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, okay. I forgot what I was saying. Oh, what's going on? Uh, Hillary yeah, Swank. Hillary and, uh, Swank and the way Chris Nolan Chris Nolan Nolan oh, yeah. Yeah. Like his female characters. He just like just kills them off in like a brutal way, usually at the expense of the male main character. I was going to say, are they tired of seeing it? I feel like he writes them more in service of the main character. Always. And like, I mean, it's, and the one movie he didn't write is the one that has a female character. That's pretty prominent and lives through the whole thing. Like I, (laughs) I love the guy, but this is like, to me, it's, he's like 99% perfect. And you tweak this one thing, you're 100%, you know, that's how I feel about him. So it's Mm -hmm. like, it's not a deal breaker, but it's it, when you look at his movies, it's every single one of them that he's written. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, but you get that. So I mean, switch I it, we, next it. year we switch it up. We do a remake of Barbie. Christopher Nolan directs it. <laughs> yeah, Greta Gerwig that, does Oppenheimer. The shit out of that. Yeah. We we plan this as an event for next year, so we yes. can get the same. Barbenheimer, Cra- Barbenheimer that we got this year, but we get the next switch year. the cast. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Oh, see, this is the that. kind of experimental filmmaking I want <laughs> yeah. from Hollywood. I want an agreement from everyone. Right. This is what we're doing next year. But don't you think? Okay, because I like this idea because it pushes directors out of their comfort zone. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. They should have to like fishbowl it once a year, where they mm-hmm. got to pull one movie, movie out of the hat, and right. guess what? You're directing that. Right. Wasn't that, the, I love that one for you and one Sh- for them? And all right, yeah, yeah. So like, you know, I don't know. All right, we're gonna play Pictionary, but. This is your next project. Yeah. Christopher Nolan's <laughs> Little Women. Yeah, like, what, what, if Greta- what would he do? <laughs> right. right. What, what, exactly. what if Greta Gerwig was Beth is the only one that lives? <laughs> yes. 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 But what if Greta Gerwig was directing Saw Ten? Like you know, like oh wouldn't that be great? Would watch. Yeah. I'm way more interested than exactly. I am now. I was gonna say I, I, that would be the first time that I'd be like, yeah, I want to watch a Saw movie. Yeah. <laughs> like they should be obligated. You and you, maybe you get one redraw in case it's like <laughs> right. In They're case like it, no, if, no. If James Gunn draws another superhero movie, he's got to put it back. Right? He's got to put it right. back. Yeah, he's enough. Someone else draws. Right? You know? That's the but equivalent of like drawing yourself for Christmas swap for, for, or whatever. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can't draw yourself. You can't draw yeah. yourself. Right. You can't give the foot bath to yourself. Yeah. Does he get to step outside? That's a sidebar. Does he say out of the DC thing and like do one for him, or is he going to do anyway? Apparently, he's doing Wonder Woman now. Yeah, but that's a DC. Fuck thing. yeah, oh, I know. Jesus. It's like right. this is not what I want. Fuck We're never going to get like no. another low scale. I'm sure They'll he's going to figure out a way to do it, but. Um, like J.J. Abrams, we've lost him, but um, come back, J.J. <laughs> yeah. Come back, to so genre people. Uh, this is also like um, one of the only, I think, Christopher Nolan movies that doesn't play with narrative time. No, I was, I was kind of clocking that. It is a linear timeline, and it's one of his only movies that has a linear timeline. Yeah, he tries a little bit. Mm-hmm. There's a bunch of little. He tries to fudge it. Yeah. Oh yeah, but, he does. He's like, yeah, oh, we yes. could go there. But his uh, his antidote for that is if you watch the Blu-ray, you can watch the uh, the movie in the in the order that it was shot. Yes, that's so he got to do it. He got to do it anyways. <laughs> yeah. Son of a bitch. Yeah, you well, sly bastard. <laughs> but the reason that that he did that, it's actually kind of fascinating because I mean the performance of Al Pacino in this movie is like nothing short of a Amazing. You feel how tired he is. My yeah, God. the whole way through it. Um, it's making me sleepy. But I'm already tired. It was not <laughs> helping. <laughs> Knowing that he like had to come in on on a day, and you know, since they didn't shoot it in order, right. and he had to know, like, I guess, you know, when I was watching some of the stuff, like he had to 
he had figured out like how tired a person would be during this entire movie. And then I don't know if he like color coded or say, whatever. Pinpoint it, it's yeah. like, all right, you're yellow today. Yeah, you're yellow today. That means you're this tired. That's and so, so cool. he would do a scene where he was wide awake in the morning, super tired in the afternoon, and medium Can you tired. Imagine the in- intern that had to go through and highlight all that. Yeah, because you know uh, it Mr. was. Mr. Pacino, you're very tired today. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When I'm thinking, how about tired that? am I, kid? No, he's <laughs> committed. This is why we call him a great actor. These are this is what the the, per- the preparation that they do. Okay, so did the, do you think the makeup artist just like put some shadows to emphasize those bags under his eyes? Because man, they or is that like prosthetic? No, no. I think the makeup is... director took makeup off, off his face yeah. and like you will be Al Pacino <laughs> and you are fucking tired. By yeah. the end yeah. of the movie, he's not wearing any makeup. Right, that's it. It's slowly just taking makeup away from yeah, him. Yeah, because he's just man. He looks fu- the bags under his eyes are tired. Mm-hmm. My God. Right, and he's like barely. He's like <sighs> he looks like a zombie for half this movie. It's wild. Yeah. He seems it, drunk, mm-hmm. and it does feel mm-hmm. like I mean, like you have been tired. You know, oh yeah, you uh, you kinda, start to get kind of hallucinating. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. You slap happy. It's and I like yeah. those yeah. scenes where like reality or something just kind of snaps in yes. like it does it, when you're right. like really and it snaps in, it's and it shifts because he does a lot of uh, the cinematography in this is very interesting very good because it snaps between focuses in different shots like yeah. focus of the background versus the front which is how you feel when you can't like get a grasp on just trying to look straight and when you're tired and you're just like yep. ugh, you know you can't focus on anything that comes through a lot in this cinematography yeah and this was um Wally Pfister, right? Yes. When Wally Pfister, Pfister was doing all of Christopher Nolan stuff. And then he went off and did Transcendence as a director. Blech. Yeah, sure. Then, oh, he did? Right? Yeah, and now was Hoyt his. Van Hoytem Hoyt oh, is really now bad. Christopher Nolan's cinematographer. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Hoyt Van yeah, Hoytemen? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's like Hoyt Hoyt. Van Hoytemen? He's Hoyt yeah. Hoyt, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Hoyt Hoyt? Hoyt Van yeah. His name Hoyt is Hoyt Hoyt. Hoyt. Yeah. yeah. Basically, yeah. I think they call him Hoyt because his last name is, I don't know. It's also got a Hoyt in it. Yeah, so he's Hoyt Hoyt, basically. Yeah, that's <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so the movie takes place in Night Mute, Alaska. Alaska. And Night what Mute. is the significance of Night Mute? The Alaska. sun is always up. And he's already having a trouble sleeping because he's conscious. Because they say mm-hmm. a good cop can't sleep because he can't put a piece of the puzzle together. A bad cop can't sleep because of his conscience. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, this what, is basically the tagline for the movie. What would be yeah. on his conscience? <gasps> Internal affairs is on his ass, Colin. Why? Oh, okay. Why? <laughs> <laughs> and like the way he talks about internal affairs, you would think it's like I don't know the fucking IRS coming right. to your house, right? Like you, I, I, think that's how, I think that's how yeah. cops look at a ter- like, yeah. internal affairs. Yeah. In every yeah. cop movie, if an internal affairs is on they it, it's them. a problem. Yeah. It's a fucking well, that's problem. Their HR, right? Yeah, yeah it is. I, it's yeah. almost like cops hate accountability. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. Yeah, it's weird how that works. It's yeah. So well, the way it's always presented, of- they always do it as like you know, it's like we're out there. Catching the bad guys, and you're trying to catch us and stop us from but, getting the but bad guys. But they're trying guys. to prevent lawsuits. Internal yeah. affairs is trying well, to make right. sure everything's also, buttoned like, up. Let's, like, let's yeah. morally keep our police yeah. on yeah. a straight it's line like here you, if we can. It's like when you fudge on your taxes, but you're pissed that you're being audited. Yeah. It's yeah. like, well, well yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You just were hoping it wasn't going to land on yeah. you, but it did. R- yeah. R- right. But it's almost like you made a correction because it's the right correction, but. They're going to get on you for it. It's the correct. No, it's the it, correction you think you deserve. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We should probably talk, say yeah, what let's we're talk talking about because it. it sounds really <laughs> abstract. But. I just kept thinking about um, 10 to midnight with the planning of the evidence. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, that came up a lot. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Not so much though. This is for jerking off. No, yeah. that. <laughs> what, what did you love to hear that, Al Pacino that, say oh, that? Oh, love it. Would have been great. Let remake a Tender Monday with Al Pacino. Hey, and him just it. throwing it at Robin <laughs> right. Williams for jerking off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, he's got a great ass. <laughs> Should we set up like the central con? Because there's sure, a lot sure. of yeah, yeah. this is a dense movie. There's a lot of there's a lot parallel of yeah. conflicts. So Al Pacino and his partner Hap, which like they sound like they're from the fucking country, but they're from L.A. Apparently, yeah. Yeah. Um, are coming up from L.A. to Alaska because there was a teen girl that was murdered. And I feel like did anyone else pick up on this? It was implying that that was like an indigenous woman that was yeah. murdered, right? That's what it yeah. felt like when they went to her house. But um. I thought that was cool and it reminded me of Dexter. Yeah. Um, this the actually, Wind River. Wind River. Wind River. Yeah, 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 I instantly thought of Wind this River. This whole show actually gave me the same like rush that Dexter does, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and they're coming up to help with this murder, and Al Pacino is already not sleeping good because Internal Affairs is on his ass. And we find out at the end of the movie the reason why Internal Affairs is on his ass is because they suspect he planted evidence to keep this guy Dobbs, who was like this famous child murderer pedophile, mm-hmm. apparently like nationally known because she even like Hillary Swank yeah. knows about him. Yeah. Um, 
keep him in jail because they had mostly circumstantial evidence and the case yeah. was flimsy. So he planted it was like the kid's they, blood. They knew it was him, but they didn't have the evidence to back it up. Yep. So he planted right. it. And right. Al Pacino's yeah. thought is like, it's better to make this like, tell this white lie for the greater good is mm-hmm. kind of his logic. Yeah, and put this guy me. away. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. there's yeah. always that cop who's like, I know he's crossed gu- the line. What, what, but they're always like, he's guilty. Mm-hmm. I know he's guilty. The evidence just isn't there, but he, he did it. He's guilty. And it's just like, what are they willing to do to get to that point? Right. It's always that, that makes point. him guilty of, right. you know, I mean, at the base level, lying, but he's like, right. that's the moment he sold his soul. And yeah. this whole yeah. movie yeah. is basically about like that coming back on him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because that's like his first strike that that happens before the movie starts. We don't yeah. even see this. We just hear about it in pieces throughout right. the movie. But, and the tension is, yeah. is continues to be brought up because his mm-hmm. partner is always talking about taking a deal, how internal affairs is on mm-hmm. his ass as well. Mm-hmm. But if he takes the deal and, and talks and everything, then Al Pacino's ass is in the fire as well. Right. So that's building tension. So it's tearing their partnership. Right, yeah. their partnership apart as well. Mm-hmm. Which so leads to Al Pacino keeps using this excuse of like, you know, if you if you make this deal, they're going to come after me in my entire 20-year career or whatever. And all which he's the people famous for putting all ever, these serial killers and, away. Like, or, is what it sounds like. All these yeah, famous criminals, criminals and, yeah, away. Yeah. But they're yeah. going to be, because internal affairs will then open up all of his cases like some of these people may go free right right? so that's his justification like is there any merit to that or is it not like well you still have to do things like by law yeah Yeah. i mean (laughs) i'm sorry but the idea of like jails just opening their doors and like dozens of serial killers <laughs> running free because this guy like credibility got ruined is kind of funny to think about like, right but, like, but that but that is the big thing they always put on that it's just like if i go down then everyone else goes free yeah. it's just like well there's still like you know to process and shit yeah. and they're just mm-hmm. like we still have to look at all the other evidence is like are you are you the key thing in all your cases right. like are right. you the thing that's gonna let everyone go mm-hmm. i guess it's all the lawyers for those uh right. mm-hmm. criminals will say like you know well you know you have sure. to throw out his case if yeah. nothing yeah. else yeah. a retrial yeah. at that point so that's the first stressor then there's an even bigger stressor they have because they're there this girl has been murdered the reason that they're there i guess is like well how do you get cops from la to alaska but i guess somebody who used to be on the lapd has moved up there yes mm-hmm. and calls down to you know like hey we need some assistance with this well case. they ask for advice and it's yeah. like you know what since we'll send you a couple cops because ia is closing in so right it's better to get them out of here <laughs> yeah. right now and, so they, and then maybe they'll also get like a little bonus credibility if they bag the right. situation mm-hmm. and come back it'll make them look good mm-hmm. yes so. yeah so you get all that selfish kind of, motivations here yep. <laughs> yeah yeah and you have that but for the uh, right reason Continue. No. Well, you have that. Uh, that's the, the that's the crux of the whole movie. The, yeah, that's <laughs> the question. That's the, yeah. the gray moral area where things get really gray. Uh, <laughs> because really, gray fog. Yeah. yeah, that is a recreation of like the scenes in the original movie, mm-hmm. which is great. But uh, they track the killer of this girl to a cabin, mm-hmm. and uh, who builds a cabin here? It's this a scenic is the worst place. cabin. What? It looked nice. There's waterfalls. It looked nice. Oh, We're down by the river. There's it, dripping, you know, there's a, oh, <laughs> a a dripping cabin. caverns beneath oh, This it. whole area looked really nice. I'd live here. I mean, it looked nice, but like the, the shape of the cabin. Oh, yeah, it was, no, the actual, not, there's no running water in that the, cabin. This right, right. Nice. and it's like, the, the, no one would go in there for any sort yeah. of recreation. The cabin sounds really nice. This was a fucking shack. Yeah, yeah this was a shack yeah, built was, over a rocky river or yeah. coaster. Like, yeah. it wasn't like, it is a fishing shack. Like, at some point, the shack's going down in avalanche. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or yeah, yeah, or yeah, there's a, or there's a large rain and there's a flood and poof, yeah. gone. It's barely standing. They actually <laughs> caught an avalanche on footage when they were making this movie. Did they? And, oh. Yeah, Sean, it's on the Blu-ray bonus features. You can watch the avalanche footage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, my God. That they didn't get to use, unfortunately. Yeah, no yeah. Right. How do we, the, like, how do we bring this into the movie? Right. Yeah. I hope they sell that as stock Ron footage Williams for dies in an avalanche. Like, right? that shit out. Seriously. Well, we're compounding his guilt here because another incident happens out in the fog. Mm. I could not go through life being this stressed out. <laughs> um, so they they chase uh, who it looks like the f- the fisherman from I know what you did. Yeah, yeah summer, kind of. Did, yeah. Um, they chase him out. Right, of this because cabin. this is where they found the backpack of the victim in this yep. cabin, and so they're like, we're gonna stake this out. That has a out. novel in it with a local author, which yes. will connect to things later. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, they chase him down. In this cabin through the stairs, but he Mm -hmm. has like a trap door that drops Mm -hmm. down into like a creek underneath that is like a tunnel that leads out into the beach where the ocean is. And it's Mm -hmm. all foggy and 
Al Pacino gets turned around because he's sleep deprived and it's super fucking foggy and he mm-hmm. just they're not familiar with the area as is right. and there's the secret tunnel and he well one of his partners gets shot in the leg first that establishes that the killer has a gun yes yeah, yeah. and then Al Pacino's running around all disoriented sees uh like silhouette go by and shoots at it and it's his partner Hap that he shoots in the chest yeah oh shit Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. and we can't just say this was an accident because there's too much circumstantial shit going on outside of yeah. this whole thing. The yeah. guy that, that has makes an investigation, it look yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, to make because Christopher Nolan's just got to twist that knife on you. You get to watch Hap die being like, Dude. "Get away from me! You tried to kill that me." That scene, yeah. that was brutal. Ooh. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah, it's yeah. good. Martin Man. Donovan is the actor there. That was yeah. intense. Um, and then he ends up. He does find the gun. The thirty-eight that mm-hmm. was left behind by the shooter at this mm-hmm. point, which we learn why it was left behind mm-hmm. later mm-hmm. on. But so he's got that in his possession. So mm-hmm. now he's mm-hmm. got to try. Well, I guess like this is where he's like, I'm going to let them assume that the killer shot uh, the partner. Right. Mm-hmm. What's the problem with that, Colin? <laughs> the killer w- saw him do it. The killer yeah. saw him do it, and. <laughs> The angle isn't right. The, the angle doesn't right. matter. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's also a different bullet in that dude's body yep. than the gun the killer had. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then there's another stressor because that's Hillary Swank's uh, character is basically assigned to that shooting. Yeah. While he's trying to solve the murder, she's you know been put on what appears like you know basically like just you know rubber stamp this. Yeah. You know, this is what happened. Right. He's a good cop and blah blah blah. And there's that one scene. Where she writes it up and she comes to him and she's like, you know, I just need you to sign this as the supervisor, which yeah. seems like a conflict of interest, yeah. but you know, whatever. Right. Uh, and he's like, well, don't do anything unless, you know, you, your name's on that. Jump, right. Double check your facts. Is he trying to catch himself right there? Why is he? Why does he? Because he could have signed it and it would have been over. He could have. Mm-hmm. But at this point, he's not. I don't think he's desperate enough and he doesn't want. He's still got time at this point, I think to figure it out or to go along and to see if he's got any other options, but he's also not. See, I don't think like, that's it because this was his out. Like he yeah. doesn't need any other options. Right. But, was, but he yeah. also doesn't want to. It was wanna, him. It was well, him. No, I th- uh, hmm. His guilt's getting to him. Yeah. No, I, th- what I meant to say, I think he's got time before he can. Maybe he realizes he's got time before he can drag anyone else into this to do wrong. You yeah, know but what he's I mean? telling her go investigate it again. Basically, right. like, yeah. look over your no, evidence yeah, again. I know he is, and I agree. I think his guilt just overtook him. Absolutely, in that oh, yeah, and absolutely. Just couldn't bring himself. To but it. I yeah. think there is time for all of that. I think he thinks he's still got time to play this out, so he comes out ahead at this point, which is why he tells her to keep going with it. You know what I mean? Like he's gonna plant something and make it work. Like, like so it this one, like she, he wants her to be. He's gonna gaslight her into thinking she did it wrong. Maybe, <laughs> but he wants her to be true to what she's doing. But he maybe he thinks he can intervene in the bigger picture in order for that to be true for her. You know what I mean? But the irony is, if he would have signed it, it would have been a, a done deal. She yeah. never would have gone back and found the other pieces, right. and it would have been sealed. Yeah. Right. That, that would have sealed our thoughts on him as a. I think so as because a character. See, this, this is point. what I think. Like, well, there's a, there's a there's a mirror scene at the end where uh, he basically she gives him the opportunity again to like I can expunge this evidence and it all goes away. Right. And with his dying breath, basically, he tells her. You know, stay gold, pony boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. like, don't throw your life away. Don't yeah. lose your way. Right. You know, yeah. um, but I got the I maybe didn't get it in previous viewings of this movie. And maybe I got it a little more tonight. I bring baggage of Al Pacino. Right. And yeah. so it's like it doesn't really, you know, in my mind, the character that he's playing seems like he's a guy who would break the rules and kind of push things the way he interrogates yeah. people yeah. or whatever. He's seen a lot. So he plays in the dirt. And he's kind of, you know, some dude with the phone book. Yeah. 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 But, but the department's willing to look the other way because he gets results mostly. See, that's, yeah. that's yeah. what it feels like. But yeah. the movie, the character's not written that way. The character, when you actually like look at what they're doing, like he is like an actual good guy, like with a moral center. The, the way he engages with uh, Finch, who is the, the killer, like later on, there's a line where he's like, I'm not going there. I know 
that you're the bad guy here. <laughs> you yeah. know, I know where this is. I'm not going to engage you in all these fantasies and, you know, try and, you know, yeah, I'm compare notes on, mm-hmm. on killings. <laughs> right. You know, it's like, cops I know you're when, the bad guy. Cops hate when serial killers try to be like, we're the same. They hate. That's always <laughs> like really a trigger do. for yeah. them. It always makes them fly off the it's handle. Like, we're not the same. You're a piece of shit. Yeah. Wait, wait, what was his line? He's like, you're no more a mystery a criminal, to me than a clock You're garbage who kills for money. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> that was great. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess that's the thing. That the, the drama of the movie is, uh, you know, like, because Robin Williams doesn't appear for like an hour into yeah. this, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, we just know we're chasing a killer. Um, He's the Kevin Spacey of this movie. And let's get rid of all the bad not, shit. That's, let's not well, say the bad that. shit that's, uh, is regarding Seven, I would say. And let's just okay. focus it on yeah. that and forget about all the other horrible <laughs> shit. Just focus on Seven. And Seven does have a. Because all these LA cops where Well, Seven was supposed to be like. New LA York cops seven, love Seven. Yeah. The, the, the leather jackets. Yeah. yeah the so leather jackets. Yeah, the the going to people's oh, apartments we, and just kicking in doors and yeah, shit. Yeah. yeah. Because nothing screams LA like wearing a leather jacket. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. In and the so 90s. The, most of them, like a leather jacket that looks like like Fucking the suit hot. jacket. Yeah. Like, yeah. It looks yeah. like a leather jacket. Looks like a blazer. Jacket. Like, yeah. I have a leather blazer. Yes. I am an LA cop. Yeah. You are a thousand percent sweat right now. Yeah. The only person wearing black leather in in Alaska. Oh, yeah. um, so his primary thing at this point is I've got to dispose of the. the I got to somehow k- get blame off of me. The killer is calling him right at this yes. point. I think and basically mm-hmm. introducing himself on the phone and saying like I saw you do this, mm-hmm. right? You know, so he's working like who is the killer? I got to figure that part out. Uh, she's trying to figure out who, how we what have it with the partner, and then eventually we're going to get the killer in there working his own thing. I did like uh, Catherine Isabel mm-hmm. from yeah. Ginger Snaps. Good. Yeah, mm-hmm. Ginger Snaps, Freddy yeah. vs. Jason, Hannibal. Mm-hmm. She's good at playing a snotty teenager. She's got that great <laughs> yeah. uh, cry, yeah, like yeah. that great cry face. That mm-hmm. just uh, she can screw up her mouth in a way that's just like, oh, mm-hmm. she's emotional. I think this was like the first thing. Like I saw it in this, I'm like, oh, in Warner Brothers, a Warner Brothers movie, yeah. you know? Like, yeah. Oh. yeah. And uh, Emily Perkins is in this too. Is she really? She was the girl reading at the funeral. Oh, uh, really? For wow. the murdered girl. Yeah. So they brought in all the Canadians for this one, huh? Yeah, I know. So that's why I'm like sitting there it's going like, Canada. Yeah. Does Christopher Nolan know Ginger Snaps? Probably. Or it's probably a casting director, yeah. right? So ooh, we can get the girls from Ginger Snaps. And you know, you know, how, the, you know how England yeah. has like 20 actors total. And they're all yeah. on the same BBC. <laughs> so I imagine uh, Canada's the same way. They have like 10 actors total. Oh, they rotate it, through every Ginger should. Snaps hit in like 2001, 2002. So I Something mean, like, like this yeah. feels like this mm-hmm. was wow. gonna, right, the next thing that they did. And MF Mad, the keeper of the Saturday Night oh, 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 wants shit. us to know. So yeah, in... we were putting Emily Perkins on the wall. Oh, oh, nice. Perkins, okay. And not Catherine Isabel yet. Uh, but Emily <laughs> Perkins was in this, right? And yeah. she was also in Ginger Snaps, yeah. which we did. Of course. And she was young Beverly Marsh in It. Yes, the TV. she was. Oh. I forgot about there that. And the th- okay. So the thing about Al Pacino's character is that he is like a genius savant. I like looking at a crime scene and being mm-hmm. like, you missed this. You missed this. You didn't mm-hmm. get that. He, the killer did this because X, Y, and Z. So everyone just takes him at his word. Mm-hmm. And that yeah. works to his advantage greatly. Right. He in this is movie. the expert that yeah. they brought up. Like, yeah. he just tells someone to go do something and they don't question it. Mm-hmm. Like, so he can pull the strings trying to cover his ass mm-hmm. because he has this respected reputation. Yeah. And I thought there was some, like, you know, and again, previous watch, didn't see this. Seeing it now, mm-hmm. like, he comes in like a bulldog, right? Mm-hmm. He's going to show these. Well, it's not like. That he has the ego, right? Like, yeah, I'm going to show you how to do it. It's not so aggressive. Yeah, no. it's more just like, I know what to look for. Here's yeah. what you're missing. And, you know, so he's going to show them all this stuff. And that leads to the shooting of his partner. And then after that, it's basically like, if you look at this movie from the cop's point of view, like, they're trying to solve this case. And every time they bring evidence to him, he's like, yeah, maybe. Hey, you want to go that way? <laughs> you know, it's like. He tries he, to, like, nudge them in the right direction. Yeah, like, and he's gently. constantly yeah. running off to go do his own thing, like, all the time. I mean, these people have to be like, what and what What did you do today? You know? Because right. <laughs> he can't. Were you logging your hours for today? <laughs> <laughs> where, where, it's been five hours. Where were you? Yeah. yeah well, yeah. I like that well, he has that interrogation room scene, which kind of then says, like, okay, he's still in the game. Yeah. As far as yeah. the cops. He's still concerned. got it. <laughs> and I just going like, yeah, maybe, you know, maybe. <laughs> sure, we can go point. that way. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> eventually the right. uh, investigation leads to, so there's the idea that maybe the girl was killed by her boyfriend. Mm-hmm. We meet him. And, yes. Uh, he He's a was, shithead teenager. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Who beats her. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that 
eventually he there gets are bruises under bruises. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he says, "Okay, but there might." Or Al Pacino figures out that she was seeing somebody else, and who is this other person? And so he, that because. Al Pacino can recognize a designer gown in a closet. See, these are the props. things. This, <laughs> props. I love LA. I mean, so he just picks it up. He goes, this is designer. It's expensive. She got a boyfriend buying this for her. And then uh, it's right. like instantly he's like implying she has like a sugar daddy or an older right? boyfriend within like seconds. Yeah. It's, yeah. He does the weed out though. Yeah. She got a stepfather, yeah, a yep. rich uncle. And they're yep. like, no. Yep. <laughs> so that eventually he is able to determine from the name Brody, which was the mm-hmm. code name that the girl had right. uh, with the, uh, Catherine Isabel, mm-hmm. that Brody is the name of a, a, a character in a series of novels mm-hmm. written by this guy who lives near 15 miles away, I yes. think, right? right? And so that leads you to Walter Finch, and that is Al Pacino. So, Robin, Robin Williams. Williams. Uh, sorry, yeah, Robin yeah. Williams. <laughs> uh, so, there's a scene like, that's really cool because, you know, the Hollywood version has to do this. I don't think the original did. You got to have a chase scene in the middle of your movie. Yeah. Sure. And so this has a foot chase. This is like a great, like a world class addition a, to a this great movie. Alaskan foot chase. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so where where does it take place and what happens? I mean, it takes place. They go up to the uh, they go up to a city and it ends up taking place over because uh, I'm I'm sure they went to a logging town is is where we're at. So there's all these logs sitting in the river, oh, God. waiting to be run through a mill of some sort. And so it's them running over just random logs lined Like a up. lumberjack competition or some yeah, shit. You know? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if you're on a log and you're trying to run back and forth on it and shit like that. Jesus and it, Christ. <laughs> <laughs> it quickly goes from cartoonish to terrifying. In yeah, because like Al Pacino, yeah, in, in the pursuit, he falls between the logs. And it's like being caught under ice at this point. Yeah. Worse, maybe? Maybe like, worse because the slam the ice, of that yes. when they slam together. Yes. It's like, like on top of the water, there's no sound really. Yeah. But under the water, all right. you hear You hear everything moving and slamming terrifying. together. But they're too heavy to like push out of your way. Yeah. Yeah. And like they're p- packed so tightly you can't fit between them. And then if they hit together, they could crush you. Right. Yeah. You, ever, you, know, oh you ever smash your hand in something Ooh. and you're just, it's the worst feeling in the world? Right. Yeah. Like that's all I could think about Imagine when I was your just like, ah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Like that, or your head all over yeah. you, you're poking yeah. yourself up, right. and then yeah. these two like things slam together. And wow, this scene goes on for a long time. Now I'm getting more yeah. stressed the longer <laughs> yeah. it goes on. You know, my anxiety. Like, Thank God he finds good. a ladder. That's yeah. not in the original, is no, it? I don't, I don't remember so. that. Yeah, and it's just, whew, it, but like, didn't know I needed to be afraid of multiple logs in the water. Now, you right. know, yeah. you know like, what, Michaela, you don't. We're in Illinois. If I'm going to be I a we'll feral be bog witch, that I might. You're not. We've decided this. You will not be a feral bog witch. You will be in your high concrete tower with. Technology and air conditioning. <laughs> I just feel like between this and Final Destination, like logs, logs are just yes, safe. Yeah. that is what I you thought. Logs no are logs. not safe no matter yeah. what. You can't no trust logs. them. Not in the water. <laughs> not in a truck. No, like, the transportation no of logs will yeah. kill millennials. But like, but like Robin Williams, nimble little guy, just hops across right? these logs, just no trucking problem. across them, and he's so smug about it. It's so frustrating. Like you just want to punch him in the face because he's so smug about everything. You do. You want to yeah. punch him? You're just like, Ugh. you're right, but mm-hmm. yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> Well, he arranges like a face-to-face meeting, right? He does, they, yes. yeah. They go on a ferry because, ride together. Like he has decided now because he has seen Al Pacino shoot his partner. Like this is why he becomes so bold because he thinks he's got this. Like this is the thing that will stop him from going after yeah, me he's or got reporting leverage. me. Mm-hmm. He has leverage over this character, and so that is that is what he's trying to use for the mm-hmm. rest of the movie. And his perspective on this is like, well, I didn't mean to kill her any more than you meant to kill your partner. Right. And this mm-hmm. is the, we are the same. Yeah. Con- yeah. Yep. And we have to help mm-hmm. each other out of this situation. Al Pacino's trying to railroad him, of course, because he's like, uh, you know, it's, it's a really complicated place to be. He can't sleep. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So that's the other thing. <laughs> right. The sun that doesn't go this down. Movie in is this movie called Insomnia. <laughs> yeah. He's really fucking tired. Right. Yeah. He's and very like, tired. Those first like two or three days of no sleep, you're just cranky as fuck. Mm-hmm. And then you and he says into as much in yeah. the movie. Yeah. He's like, man, we're just cranky. <laughs> Which was a yeah. great line yeah. when he's talking to the killer on the phone. He's like, ah. <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, even the way I I love that too. Like the 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 sunlight always coming through the windows, mm-hmm. and you know he has like this translucent. Uh, some it looks like uh, you know like paper. Yeah, uh, like curtain. butcher paper. It's a, yeah, it's yeah. a thin pull down curtain. Yeah. So it's always yeah. glowing orange from behind. It's like the Kenny Rogers Roasters episode of Seinfeld. <laughs> in his apartment, he can't fucking sleep. It's like, ah. <laughs> 
Too it's much so orange bright. light coming in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was that one, but that scene where you know he's telling uh, Moria Tierney that like you know it's so it's so fucking bright in here, and mm-hmm. she's like, it's not. It's very dark. And she flips the lights with it's, it's so like, fucking <laughs> bright. It's like, like a fucking surge in the auditorium. <laughs> right. I love Jesus that. Christ. Right. That is a good little um a uh, little thing at the near the end of this movie, just like. Yeah, because you're right. Like it does look. I can see things all this stuff. When she turns it on, it's like it's yeah. a little overblown. Oh, Chris yeah. Nolan said they like uh, overexposed the shit out of it. Oh that. yeah, oh yeah. Dramatic yeah. effect. Yeah. Yeah. Great, yeah, you know, drives home that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really good. The um, I guess you know because the 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 sleep is taking a toll on him. Uh, the stress is taking a toll on him. Robin Williams is going like, okay. He's taunting him, harassing yeah. him with he, phone Well, calls. he's trying to, like, I guess that's the, the He wants the, him to work with him. Mm-hmm. But Al Pacino's trying to plant evidence, again, to frame Robin Williams, who did it. <laughs> you know? Because yeah. right. he's doing the same thing again. I mean, this is what he got busted for, yeah. or why IA is looking at mm-hmm. him. Right. But he's like, I know that this guy did it, but he knows that I, I shot my partner, so I'm going right. to put the gun mm-hmm. in his apartment. But this is a guy who is an author of police procedural books. Yeah. So right. he's got yeah. some idea of yeah. what the cops would do, are capable of. Yeah. He he's, makes it clear that he's had an admiration for cops his entire life. Right. Yeah. And, and so like, he, this is his fantasy to get to like, yeah. play it, cop. Right. Yeah. And so he's a little ahead of the game as far as what's going on here. And he also like exhibits this kind of knowledge of like, I know exactly where you are. I know you're lonely. I know you want to talk to somebody. I know like, you know, the nights, you know, you haven't been sleeping. Yeah. You, you start to hallucinate. He's like, I went five days when I first moved here. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like, so he knows right. what's going to happen and could talk to him very personally about like, you know, I'm the only one who understands your situation. Right. I know what it's like <laughs> to, mm-hmm. to not be able to sleep. I know what it's like to have something yeah. that you don't He's want. He's playing good cop. Know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep, he is. Yeah, that's crazy. And that plays in with something Maura Tierney says later on in the movie. It's like there are two people who live in Alaska. It's the people who were born here and the people who come here to escape for something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so that also plays into it. Because, you know, with Rob Boyne was talking about, it's like when I first moved here and his insomnia at that point. Mm-hmm. It's like the people who have that guilt or something going on with them. Like you come here and it, it combined with all the, you know, the, uh, uh, the atmosphere it will just eat at you, mm-hmm. and then you will have these at least five days where you're just going to be like fucking, yeah, on edge. Like you can hear the, you can almost hear the sunlight burning through his yeah. window, yeah, yeah. into well, his head. Yeah, because that's the the entire the whole point is that it's not the sun that's keeping him up; it's his right. guilt. Yeah. Yes, because I think it, it yeah. does that by it keeps on every time he gets into bed, he sees flashes of hap. Yeah. He sees mm-hmm. visions of hap, like yeah. in the room or you know somewhere. Uh, so that's always we know. I think that it's it's his guilt that's eating. This motherfucker's got multiple things to feel guilty about. Take your pick. You yeah, know? Yeah. it's not and that. It's planting to... evidence. Yeah. 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 right. Which yeah. understanding how it ends. Like I understand his final words yeah. in the movie. Yeah. You're just like <laughs> I understand you at this point. Like and I, I get I, it. I love that scene when he's talking to um, the hotel uh, manager, and yeah. she and he asks her. He's like, you know, he. First of all, I feel terrible for her because he explains like the whole scenario and he, he like, trauma dumps. He, on her yeah, trauma dumps on her. It's just <laughs> awful. I feel I feel bad for her. But the whole thing, he's like, you know, what do you think? And she's like, oh, I'm I'm no one to judge. And then he's like, but no, go ahead. And she's like, well, it's all about what you think is right in the moment and what you can live with. Nope. Mm-hmm. And very, I'm like, yeah, I love nice. that line. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's so good. good. Yeah. Because right at that moment, that is. And is it can be, it's like acceptable in your mind at the moment, mm-hmm. but then you get past it, and mm-hmm. so much else comes with that. Like, how do you feel now? Is like, again, mm-hmm. it's the living with it. Yeah. Like, and how does that go? I how think does that Robin change? Williams has like the 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 extension of that. That mm-hmm. like you don't get to decide when you tell the truth. You know, it's like <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. the truth exists outside of that or whatever. You know, yeah. it's like you can't just mold it to fit. You know, you you got to own up to it. Mm-hmm. Um, so. He does, um, I guess, you know, it's like he, I think he thinks he's playing Robin Williams. Uh, oh, he definitely does. Oh, yeah. You know, because he's planted a weapon, but then it he's becomes so clear. He's about all of it, though. Yeah, because, <laughs> but I think that's because he's sleep deprived, yeah, right? I mean, I think sloppy, that's the thing. Right? Like, yeah, because he's tired. It's like Robin well, he's Williams. Sleep tired, and also because it's just, it's so personal. Yeah. And the fear is getting to him. Yeah. He's becoming overwhelmed and he's getting sloppy. If he was uh, at his, um, you know, peak. professional peak, yeah. like operating 
you know, on optimal <laughs> reserves or whatever, or yeah. performance, mm -hmm. would he have been able to pull this off? 100%. You think? Yeah, because he's yeah. that good. I think he's, he's that, that yeah. good. He's done it before. Like you, yeah. he has done like, it before. I, but what <laughs> I'm th but my thing is like I feel like it's a slippery slope when you're a cop and you like bend the truth once. What what's and you get away with it. What's stopping you from doing it? Right, over and over and over that's, again. You know? Oh yeah, that's the whole, oh yeah, yeah, and that will build. And that's build the whole point of his final confident. line to yeah. Harry Swank. Yeah, like don't start now because yeah. don't let right. that genie out of the bottle. Yeah, cause yeah, can't put it back. Yeah, yeah. You, you can't go back. Mm -hmm. Don't do it now. Well, okay, so. Well, I mean, I, I guess just following that, it, like he's sleep deprived and all that, but like, did he make a mistake? Did he make any mistakes in his, like the way that he's trying to orchestrate this? I mean, I guess, you know, he, he left the, the Many. evidence. He left the gun in the, in the vent. Yeah. Okay. But that's just because Robin Williams found it. Right. You know, uh, which would have, right. Which is something that probably would have worked before, but. I mean, saying all that stuff out loud to Robin Williams in public was kind of stupid that he records yeah yeah, yeah. Like, yeah but even still like there are tons of people standing around that could overhear anything you're and saying right or now. put yeah. you two together yeah, you know exactly. it's like i saw exactly. you yeah yeah, um, yeah. that the, whole idea was so stupid yeah when they showed the um when they showed the the ferry worker like at the door like mm -hmm. leaving people out i'm like is he gonna remember him right. i feel yeah. like he's gonna yeah. come yeah. back yeah. later that's what i was thinking yeah. Yeah. Was, the one that that they that couldn't write him out well i guess they did write him out of it but he couldn't got out of was he tries to get to, um, so they bring Robin Williams in for uh, like a police interrogation yes. and Robin Williams has decided, well, we're going to make the boyfriend the patsy. And so I yeah. found the gun, which he kind of reveals, you know, in that yeah, which interrogation. Is a great thing. It's like, <laughs> which, yeah, 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 Al Pacino doesn't know until it's revealed. It's like, oh, so he has to act on, right. he has to improvise on the spot. Like right yeah. now, I, I got to get that. over there. Yes, yeah. love that. Re <laughs> the like, revelation and the talking and everything. Just like, oh, you found where yeah. I put it. And, and this yeah. motherfucker tries to just walk out of the interrogation and be like, I got somewhere to be. <laughs> and his coworkers are like, Yo, you're, talking you're to in the middle of an interrogation. with like going? This is well, your show. Yeah. But that's what I like about this character, right? Like He's just I, like, oh, like, I gotta leave. But did that moment that they're like, no, you gotta come back in here. We're talking to the guy. Yeah. And he slams the door. And I'm like, at that moment, did he go like, okay, I know how I'm gonna get out of here. And that's when he starts aggressively going after. I think he was They'll like, we gotta speed leave. this up. They gotta, <laughs> they gotta kick him out yeah. of the room. They're like, you, yeah. gotta, you gotta cool down. You yeah. gotta get out of here. And he's like, yeah. okay, now I can you know, yes. hustle over to the, the, the boyfriend's apartment yeah, try absolutely. to find this fucking gun. Oh, yeah. But that's the scene where they, that like, that's Ooh. the mistake. The that's the ticking clock scene. Though. Yeah. That's what yeah. he is. Because, okay, we gotta talk about the fastest warrant ever granted in the history. Oh, of the Jesus. <laughs> so, um, Small town. The co-worker that got shot in the leg, he's like, well, we gotta call in the warrant, but we're gonna do it now, so we should have it soon. They get it in what ten minutes, and so it's like you're watching Al Pacino try to get to the house, get the gun out, and beat the clock on this warrant, which is just so laughable because in real life it'd be like a couple days, right? right? It's just like like uh, maybe the judge, the same was, day if we're the judge was on a golf course yeah. somewhere. We had to go pull him in, and right. just like yeah, so but that's there. They're on the clock. No. They're like answering phones, and it's like he knows that too. It's like as soon as they say we're going to call for the warrant, the clock starts. Yeah. Like. <laughs> And he, oh, it's a small town. There's one yeah. judge. And he almost gets caught. I guess that's the moment where it's like, there's no other way. I, like, you can't explain That was yourself. the Dexter moment. Yeah. That was the, like, yeah. every yep. episode of yeah. Dexter hinges on a scene like that. He's in the apartment. The cops are coming in. He hides in the bathroom. And it's like, well, the game is up. Yep. And it's then fucked. he's saved by uh, <laughs> contrivance or luck or whatever. Uh, there is a, a little, a little <laughs> saved by contrivance a couple times in this movie with that scene and the bullet later on. That Hillary Swank happens to find. Oh right, yeah, because yeah, she goes just back like, there. Okay, and, yeah. she found the bullet. It, it's yeah. it's one of our well that and the um, the pictures are one of our favorite movie tropes of <laughs> the cop just dropping the file and then the documents arrange themselves in a way they've never been laid out before <laughs> and suddenly the whole puzzle is solved. Oh, I hope favorite. this never what? goes he away. Have, the favorite. bullet couldn't have come from that direction. Yeah, yeah. See, but I took that as it's maybe true, but I took it as like see that's the the power of a power nap. I mean, all you need is a couple <laughs> seconds and your brain's she like. Yeah. Dropped and she's like, oh, yeah. wait a second. But she literally dropped the pictures, though. She had to yeah. like drop them for them to arrange <laughs> themselves in the right way. Like this movie really does hinge on sleep. <laughs> like, she, was look, she was looking at Alucard and she drops them into Dracula. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, that's how that works. <laughs> And I love that trope, and I hope it never goes away in movies, because <laughs> it's always so funny. And, like, Dexter even had a thing like that in, like, season three, when Deb is like, we've been looking down. 
We, and she's sleep deprived too. Oh, she's, she's like, like <laughs> we've been looking down, but we need to look up. And everyone thinks she's, she's unhinged. Yeah, and it's she's a tree trimmer the, killer. She's sitting in the room with, yeah. the, with the pictures all around. Yes, her. I yeah. do remember that. And and she she was like, hasn't slept for like three days, and she's like, we need to look up. And everyone's like, she's insane. Yeah, but she ends up being right. Yeah, I, I love this. I always wanted to be a thing. Always. <laughs> this is how we get them. Yeah. Uh, this leads. We gotta to look to the trees. You would have one person that's so dedicated, they're willing to like break their brain to solve the case. Yeah. Well, they they end up, uh, you know, with the um, evidence that Robin Williams has planted. Um, mm-hmm. They find the gun at this yep. kid's house. So they the put, boyfriend. Yeah. Robin Williams is justifying this as like, well, he beat the girl and, you know, he was going to do something worse. So you're actually right. stopping like, I something didn't mean worse. To. He did. Yeah. It's basically mm-hmm. his defense. Yeah. This is the uh, uh, preemptive what arrest. Is, we're we're saving society by taking a dangerous guy off the street what's, before he becomes dangerous. Sure. Right. What's, what's his name? <laughs> the fucking Tuck Everlasting. What's his name? The boyfriend? Yeah. Uh, Randy? Uh, Randy. What's yep. the name Randy. of the actor? Oh. Is it Jeremy Jackson? No idea. No idea. Brother of Joshua Jackson? No. Okay. Camp it can't be Jeremy Jackson. He's in Camp Nowhere. Talk everlasting? Nobody? No. Did like, nobody I, grow up with I, this I, kid? I, no. I don't recognize this guy. I didn't know. Really. I know what you, I know the movies. You are you're correct. It's Jonathan Jackson. Okay. Jonathan Jackson. Yes. That's it. Ooh. I said Jeremy. Jonathan. <laughs> there is a Jeremy Jackson though. I think so. somewhere. I think so. Well, the movie gives. He was. Uh, he was in like every issue of Bop and Sixteen and Teen Beat and all that <laughs> shit. All right. That this I had. is only. This sorry, is, this I'm is sorry. Who, this is Joshua. No, no jo- Jonathan. Jonathan. Jonathan okay. Jackson. Jonathan, There's the other Jackson. Jackson. He was also lucky yeah. in General Hospital. Okay. Sorry. Wow. Let's go on. <laughs> There's a lot happening. Yeah. Wow. Right now. Well, <laughs> Jonathan Jackson. We just corner. tapped into my like 12 year old self. Is so. this like first <laughs> first feature film? Like, well, okay. So, um, no, Camp Nowhere. Oh, Camp Nowhere. That's don't right. Know. Yeah. We have, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. No, don't say that's right. That's you have right. No, no idea. She said it before. Yeah. Um. Christopher Lloyd's in that movie. Sorry. I remember that movie. Mm-hmm. I don't remember him being yeah. in it though. But uh It's like remember accepted with Justin Long? <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. It's the same concept. A bunch of kids like like Make get their parents to send camp. them to summer camp, but it's a fake summer camp that yeah. they just like go to. Nice. And oh, Christ- Christopher Lloyd is their like camp counselor. He's like yeah, homeless this, dude that I they mean, pay. Yes, this sounds familiar. Sorry. Yeah. It's anyway. like ninety two, <laughs> something like that. Probably. 91. Yeah. I was a child. I'm ninety say 91. 94. Um, Cam nowhere. One of us is probably right, but mm-hmm. uh, so the uh, they they take this kid away, and there is that reaction shot on Pacino, right? Where I mean, you can see it's eating at him right. because ninety four. Congratulations, <laughs> Sean. It'll be something in your paycheck. Uh, yeah. Thank you. He's getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> oh what? wait, uh, yeah. oh, shut up. <laughs> wait a second. So I have uh, to share with Igor if that. There you go. <laughs> nope. <laughs> so the kid goes away. Pacino's really guilty about this because he knows that they're railroading an innocent kid. And he's like, you know, well, what can I do? That's when he has the breakdown with um, more How fucking dirty Tierney. you gotta be to railroad a kid? Yeah, like, I know. Because yeah. you can see it on him. Yeah. This time I was watching him and he really is like not. You're taking his whole future yeah, away. Yeah. He's not. It's not sitting well with him. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. uh, and Finch is like, you know, because he's like, I didn't mean to kill her. You know, uh, she they came, all say that she came yeah, to talk yeah. to me, and then uh, you know, I tried to kiss she her. She laughed at me, started laughing at me. I, I had to hit her. It was okay Just when Randy to. did it, uh, mm-hmm. and then uh, I had to. Then she started screaming, and I had to make her stop. You know, I mean, it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, and that's it's what these guys always have to do. About it, yeah, yeah, which is why mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. I think Pacino's right at the very beginning. He's like, he's going to do it again because he crossed that line, and once you cross mm-hmm. that line, it's like, and they back. even talk yeah. about this. You know that it, it's like. It's an awareness, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. It's a very scary movie, and, and, and it's psychological yeah. implications. Yeah, yes. Um, and so, um, Pacino's going home. He's like sleep deprived. Case is closed. But uh, 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 Hillary Swank is like, I think he killed his partner. You know, it's like she's dedicated. She, yeah. she's yeah. a dedicated rookie yeah. that's going to figure it out. She has a great. It's because like she had hero worship for this guy, and yeah. you kind of see that like melting away from her and the yes. heartbreak mm-hmm. that yeah. she's got. No, oh, yeah, she's got hero. like tough thoughts and decisions yeah. she's making, looking at evidence, going, "I know what this is, but do I do it?" Mm-hmm. Yeah, but she still goes out to Finch's place. Because uh, there's always like this big question about like where did he actually take the girl after he killed her? He killed her at the shack, yeah, mm-hmm. and then he took her body somewhere and cleaned her up and then dropped her at the dump. But where did he take the body? Uh, and so she goes out to this like summer home that he has, 
to get these letters or some kind of evidence. Right, yeah, because to... they wrote letters to each other, so she's like, these might help. Anyway. Yeah. So when she's going out there, does Finch know that she knows that he's the killer? Finch is always waiting for that. He's always ready for that. I have a feeling. Yeah, that's. I feel he, like he's always wants yeah. that. He'd, he'd have to yeah. be for him, for him being as smart as he is for the rest of the movie. He, he would have to be aware, like, or ready for anyone to be like, "Hey, you're the killer." This is yeah. this is the uh, signs. This is the signs of the lamps. I feel like this at this is, point he suspects that she's probably on to him, and the moment she sees the paisley dress, he knows. Right. But why bring her out there? See, that's the thing. He like sets it up so she and he's actually and he like, sets it up so she sees the dress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's just so she she's distracted, so he can. Yeah. He Remember, can, he said she showed up early. Yeah. He said, "Oh, I wasn't expecting oh, yeah. you." Yeah. Yep. She did. I think she did that. She on did purpose. on purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's why he was kind of in a panic because yep. he, the house wasn't ready yet. Right. But right, he right. explicitly like it seems like directed toward the evidence. I think he was trying to take care of her for Dormer. Mm -hmm. because Probably. he's aware that she knows that Dormer killed his partner. Right, and he's partner. still hoping that like, if he can get rid of her, him and Dormer will still be good. Well, yeah. then he has another one up but on then, him, yeah, right? And, you owe yeah. me another yeah. one. You know? I think right, that's what's right, going right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that he's... He... building up collateral with him. Yeah. 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 Right, that's his whole thing. Mm -hmm. It's just like, I'm going to build up everything where you can't go against me. Because mm -hmm. even when uh, when Al Pacino says that it's over and he'll tell everyone, the, uh, Robin Williams starts elevating and freaking out a little bit more mm -hmm. he, he starts questioning was like what, what why would you give why would you let that go why would you give all this away why would you tell the truth you at could this just point? walk away right now right mm -hmm. right right so he starts freaking out a little bit more mm -hmm. there's a shootout the shootout because mm -hmm. hollywood you gotta end with a shootout oh, yeah. the first one ended with a shootout i, mean, I can't okay remember i don't yeah. remember. i remember a chase on the like docks and ended. stuff like mm -hmm. that but um well there's a shootout that happens because uh, Finch is like armed with a shotgun and mm -hmm. blasting at them, and Al Pacino gets behind him. But I mean, basically, you're going to get the two guys shooting each other. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Robin Williams is fatally injured, and uh, Al Pacino still has a little bit of life life left in him. Right. And so, Robin Williams sinks to the bottom. Yeah, in a really creepy way. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Liked it. Yeah. But, that, then, but how they, that 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 was to pull it off, it was good, like visually, mm -hmm. like oh, yeah. him sinking down, like mm -hmm. yeah, in the the icy water. Yeah, but like if you think about it from Pacino's perspective, now he's not any less fucked than he already was. He's always fucked, you know. No, like but, the amount of layers of deception he's created here, like it's all gonna fall. But down I think one way he's it, there was that I think that conversation with uh, Moira Tierney in the hotel mm -hmm. that was the moment. That he's like, okay, I'm done. Because after that, he's like, guns out, going over. Yeah, he's yeah, going to like take care of this. Because, it's going to yeah. be done. Whatever anybody what knows. Saying, like, how else yeah. could it end? Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. You know, he's like, like this is, he's uh, people way. will know. Yeah. 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 Like, at least he knows that. Right. Yeah. It's like his redemption is going to be like saving her. Yes. Right? right. He yes. knows that she's walking right. in. I'm, she's I'm gone. I'm done. Yeah. There's nothing yeah. you can do to save me, but mm -hmm. you, you can still go ahead and be, you know, on a clear path. Right. Yeah. So he's the future. The better mentor than Robin Williams is the writer mentor. Or yes. kill the girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd yeah. say so. I'd say so. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, is there a parallel there? Like, even, uh, may, you know, like, no. there are mentors. <laughs> mentor, yeah. the mentorship. The good mentor, the bad mentor. And they're putting mm -hmm. that theme in there. Uh, I mean, the good mentor was, you know. I think at the point. Tell the, the truth. The bad mentor was like, murder. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm going to kill you. So, because yeah. he, he wasn't a true mentor. Mm -hmm. Right, because even he even Fake said, mentor. yeah, he even said like, well, what did she write? He's like, oh, she wrote poetry. He's like, was she any good? And he said, no. He's, like, did you ever tell her that? Why would I? Yeah, uh, a mentor, not a, good mentor. Yeah. a mentor would talk her through that. Yeah, yeah. Not a good he was he was never yeah. a mentor to her. No, he, a, that no. was just his alibi. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. that was just based on everything. It he was said. a way to justify his relationship with her. Yeah, yes, <laughs> which he's doing for the cops, yep. but also trying to mm -hmm. you know put through for himself, yeah. make himself mm -hmm. feel better. And then in the uh, the end of the movie, uh, Al Pacino, now fatally wounded, mm -hmm. uh, basically imparts his wisdom that she should stay on the straight and narrow, and yeah. damn it, he just wants to sleep. He does. Sleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was he does. so relieved when this guy finally got to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, go to sleep, Al Pacino. Yeah. Like, like, you look like die. you deserve it. He needs rest. rest. He yeah. needs it. <laughs> Truly. To the Jesus. haunting chords of David Julian's music. I think we talked about him before because he did uh, 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 The Descent. His, ah, like, oh, really, yeah. Like, yeah. I haven't seen him doing movie scores recently, but for a while yeah. there, he did a lot of them. They're always it. these kind of like yeah. really 
Dour. Yeah. Yeah, this one is bleak. Yeah. But I mean, it matches the movie, I guess. Yeah, They're yeah, like tones, sure. long yeah. drawn out yeah. tones, yeah. and it's all. I, I feel like it's just weird to watch a Nolan movie and it not be Hans Zimmer at this point. You yeah. know, it's mm-hmm. like it should have drums assaulting me all the time. You know, <laughs> yep. I mean, it's I'm not glad a Nolan it, movie. Yeah. As much as I like Hans Zimmer, I'm yeah. glad it didn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This but once you have a chance to work with Hans Zimmer, why yeah. would you work with anybody else? <laughs> like, uh, no, at Oppenheimer, he worked with somebody else. That was um, uh, Johan Johansson. Oh, yeah. right? no. no, no, he's dead. He's dead. But, the other one. No, but he's the one. <laughs> no, no, no. He's dead. Well, he is, but no, he's yeah. the one. I was just um, thinking of it. He's the one I think Nolan would eventually have gotten yeah. to. Yeah. yeah. Because uh, Who of his it? music. Now I gotta look it up. It's I'm like, curious. Uh, oh. It's another Swedish guy with yeah. similar first name and last name, perhaps. Uh, ooh, we saw it. I'm scrolling. Remember. Who's gonna get it first? Uh, you, know, because tra- the only one's I'm scrolling. I'm trying to remember. Uh, <laughs> uh, fuck. I saw the credit. I don't remember. Uh, Al Pacino dies. The end. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and yeah, and it just like there's no there's no epilogue. And there or shouldn't be. Like, like we're good. I think yeah, we got over. everything we needed. At and this it was point. funny because as as they're like you know as they're panning out and we just see Hillary Swank standing over him and she puts the bullet back in her her pocket yeah. like for evidence. I was Ludwig like, Gorenson. That's your yeah. right. Oh, uh, yeah. Ludwig Gorenson. But my, yeah. as as we're panning out, my thought was like Christopher Nolan, don't let me down. Yeah, don't let me down. Don't let there be another scene. No, no other scene. No, nope. yeah. Yeah. no, we didn't. Yeah, at least mm-hmm. we knew. We I didn't get need any more. <laughs> That's all I needed. Well, Michaela, since you have seen the other one, well, we'll have to. You have to do it in your wrap up. Okay. You, have to, you have to give me a, like a comparison of. Yeah. Uh, when was the one? Uh, other one made? Nineteen ninety-seven. Okay. Yep. I remember I caught it on like the independent film channel mm-hmm. or something back then. Sure. I mean, I'd heard of it. And it watched it because it sounded interesting. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden there's a Hollywood remake and it's from the guy who made Memento. And it's got and, fucking Al Pacino yeah, in and, it. Yeah. yeah. It's and got Robin Williams. Yeah. yeah. Which you knew uh, uh, advertising for this. You knew Robin Williams was the bad guy going into this, right? Mm-hmm. That's yes. what I remember. Mm-hmm. Okay. They yep. showed that like that scene where he like shoves him up against the pole really yep. hard. There's that was that. in the trailer. I remember there was a... There the, where I, is she, Finch? That, yeah. Right. Yeah. I remember there was the them uh, him looking over as they crossed the logs. Yeah. I remember there was that. There was the Hillary Swank. The only difference between, uh, you know, that she t- that line about staying up all night, keeping him up yeah, all night, yeah, good yeah. cop, bad cop, she, that was in the trailer. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There All right. it is. Insomnia. Well, I guess we will go around the table and tell you individually what we actually thought of tonight's movie. But first, we're going to read some of your mail. And to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. His name's Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thank you, sir. He hasn't slept in a very long time. He hasn't no. slept in a He's long like a vampire. Time. He doesn't sleep. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, I imagine him in his tiny yeah. little coffin. Yeah. <laughs> but the, his workout is running on those logs, though. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. good at that. Because really you got to yeah. get that balance. Yeah. Right. He's yeah. got... He's... He's, he's surprisingly athletic. Yeah. Surprisingly limber. Yeah. Surprisingly limber. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's very scary, actually. Yeah. Right? So, oh, yeah. Well, terrifying. you don't have he's joints, scary. it's easy, you know? Have you ever yeah. seen, That's have you ever had <laughs> Igor run after you? Yeah. It's frightening. <laughs> uh, well, we should let the good folks at home know how they can uh, participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or X. Oh god damn it! <laughs> Twitter uh, uh, at is it, at Sad Freak is Show it on at, it is yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like what's X changed? Are ads yeah. still a thing? Yeah, well today retweets the, are not reposts yeah, the, are the, now a thing. Yeah, the app thing actually did change. The, yeah, mine did, the yeah, name too. So um, yeah, at Sad Freak Show on X. <laughs> uh, Jesus, no. by email. SaturnightFreakShowYahoo.com. <laughs> Holly almost gave up. <laughs> or on uh, Instagram and threads. As, Are we on threads? Uh, oh, I, don't, I, don't threads. I don't know what's we're happening threads. anymore. We're, we're creating threads. We're knitting a quilt. Social media is in chaos. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, and that's uh, Saturday Night Freak Show about, oh, uh, MF Mad, ah. the aforementioned keeper of the Saturday Night Freak of Show. Of course. Yes. Wants us to know that we're also inducting Robin Williams. Oh, uh, to the good. Yay. Wait, all right. Let's think Hook. about it. Hook. Jesus. All right, Hook, Insomnia, and Deconstructing Harry. Oh, the whole what? Woody really? Allen thing comes back around again. Jesus yeah. Christ. Oh, somewhere where didn't he go to hell? Oh, I don't, remember, I don't remember. Yeah. I don't remember. I don't remember. No, uh, no, okay. no remembrance <laughs> of that, but okay. All right, about tonight's movie. 
Insomnia. Simon Carter writes in and says, I haven't seen this movie in a long time, but I remember Same. really enjoying it. Also have a memory of a scene with logs that freaked me out. Yep. Yeah. You remember it correctly. Is. Yep. <laughs> Uh, Zimmerman Bledsoe says, several <laughs> years back, my ex and I took a trip to Alaska. We were amazed uh. how more naturally awake we both were in the constant daylight. <laughs> Since we were on vacation and driving a lot, this was great for us. The 14-hour drive day with lots of hiking felt like nothing at all, but it got me wondering about the what would the opposite would be like, a never-ending yeah. night. Have ever any of you ever experienced an extended period of 24-hour day or night and how do you think you'd respond? Holly? Holly's no. coming closest. Hey! Yeah. Holly's our resident Alaska That's right. uh, expert. Yeah, what what did the Daily recently. Show call them? Our, our, yeah. our Alaska correspondent, yeah. Holly. Yes. Thank you, Sean. Um, <laughs> I was recently in Alaska in May of this year. Mm. Um, I was there in May, uh, like I said, and at that point, it was not 24-hour darkness, but How it was late? very late. Like at 1 in the morning, it was finally like slightly dark Bro. wow okay like I could, we could still see the sun like at the peak of the horizon yeah. Boy. like yeah at but 1 a.m though that's like wild. we were yeah. walking down the street at nine o'clock at night it looked like three in the afternoon that's damn it was fuck, yeah crazy so i fuck with your psyche yeah yeah and then i mean i guess if you're gonna do the double feature you watch this yep. and you watch 30 days a yes. night right yeah. yeah oh yeah but no fuck that keep me <laughs> no, I, I would kill myself if i just like in constant days daylight and then yeah. vampires holy yeah. shit and why we, am i here and we did like we took a lift everywhere so we would always ask our drivers like if they were from alaska and mm. you know whatever um and we'd always be like well did, did you get used to the you know <laughs> darkness and then he's like yeah you get used to it you know 20 i'm like how do you get how? used to that it's so depressing it's so but well, even in 30 days a night like most of the people like, like leave for yeah. a month or whatever right yeah. Yeah. and they did mention in this movie that like uh in the winter in this town of night mute that's when it's dark for like mm -hmm. I, I don't know if they say a month but mm -hmm. it's like no five months yeah he says oh, like the sun you never really see yeah. The sun. yeah it's like it's december january it's like 24 hour darkness that's it's awful. insane this is a fake town right night mute alaska yeah, is that so. real okay uh, Michael Whitaker says, "I everyone know Robin has blackout curtains, though. Like, yeah, yeah, everyone. Yeah, so that would be in the hotel rooms. You yeah. gotta have this. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we had them in our hotel." Uh, Michael Whitaker says, I know Robin Williams has done dramas before, but this might be the first time I've ever seen him play a villain, at least a serial killer. And then we recommend uh, mm -hmm. one hour photo. Well, he's That's... not a serial killer in that, but he's a creep. He's a yeah. creep. Um, Appleiva says, "Amazing how comedic actors cross over so effectively to dramatic roles." Yeah, it. it's all about accessing the same emotions, whether you want them to be funny or sad. It's that subverting is your decision. expectations, yeah. right? Even yeah. if you're in a funny way or a scary way. All right, what's Adam Sandler's best dramatic role? Uncut Gems. Okay, what's Jim Probably. Carrey's best dramatic role? Truman Show. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, Michael uh -huh. Piatowski says Christopher Nolan needs to go back to making movies like Insomnia and Memento. I would like more thrillers from him, please. I love a thriller. From yeah, Nolan. he's good at him. What do you mean by that? Like maybe a smaller movie? Do you, That's what I'm Do we feel like this is a smaller movie than him. his other movies? He's in his sleepy old man phase right now. I need him to wake up. He makes <laughs> sleepy old man. He makes like these gigantic. Like you got to be on your game to put these things together. I, I mean, I know, but like the the content is sleepy. Like mm. war stuff. I'm I'm mm. not. I'm not. Oppenheimer's not, not sleepy. It's a I, I know, but like uh, it's it's also not the mind bendy thing that Inception mm. is or Interstellar right. is. You know what I'm saying? Like I need a little more mental stimuli from my my more recent Nolan movies. Yeah. It's, it's not like I tried. <laughs> I, would, I would rather watch Tenant than Dunkirk. That was he was coked up. No, we can't say that about. Man. I mean, I don't, I don't know. know. I feel, we I, can. <laughs> I feel like there was still an element of mind fucking Oppenheimer. He's just so good at like cerebral, crazy nonlinear yeah. stuff. And I know Oppenheimer's nonlinear, but it's still a dramatization of a real person. It's a biopic essentially, you know. So yeah. Yeah, that's still, weirdly grounded, you know, it, for him. It's a Christopher Dolan movie. It is. I know, like but it, it's yeah. I, but it's still based on a real person. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, last week we watched a movie that was called Upgrade. What's next? Wrote in and said, "Great movie. Fight choreography was awesome. I had the best time watching this. I need to watch it again." Yes, it was a good one. Yeah, yeah it was good. It was a good one. Uh, Half Price Horror. Uh, we mm. were talking about on the show about how um, the actor is the three names. What's his name? Logan uh, Marshall Green. Yeah. Yes, Logan Marshall Green. Yeah. had like it was a showcase role, and he was doing a lot of physical acting yeah um and we said it was great and uh half price horses well does bruce campbell and evil dead count 
because there's a bit where he reaches up and flips himself over his own head. That's so fucking impressive. Yeah, no, I mean he's the OG of that, right? Yeah, yeah. I think. Oh, yeah. Well, but we did mention that on the show. Yeah, I think they did. haven't heard it at the point they wrote. In uh, Vanishing Point was the movie we watched before that. Uh, KG writes in and says this was epic. Hashtag Jimmy Kowalski. Kowalski K O W. Because Kowalski's not given a name in the movie, but Jimmy is his name in the Vigo Mortensen uh, remake. Uh, interesting. Well, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's where we're going. Okay. Why do no. I? I already. I already don't remember this movie. <laughs> Jimmy Kowalski. Ouch. Uh, you don't. A white Ouch. Dodge Challenger, Challenger oh, oh, that okay. drives. I was like, the, you recommended the vistas it. I know. Of the desert. I instantly blanked. To already forgot it. No, no. Yeah, it was good. Ouch. <laughs> it hurts me. It was my pick. You know uh, me. I, know, I don't have a capacity in my right, mind. They don't remember thing. Action I don't, USA. I don't remember That's anything. true. And there like, were many explosions in that of, movie. Yeah. I don't remember The house, anything. he barely hits right. the house and explodes. He barely hits it and it explodes. Once we watch a movie, I have to wipe my mind clean for the next one. <laughs> <laughs> just no remembrance. Files. <laughs> they call me Panama. We're not, we're we're not trans. You call you Panama. <laughs> we're not Johnny Depp and Transcendence. We don't live in the computer to control all that no. shit. Uh, Bell Tolls 1984 says, I love the music video for Show Me How to Live by Audio Slave featuring lots of scenes from we Vanishing Point yeah. and the band driving around the Challenger. I disagree. It's a bad I, music video. I, think we I don't think it's that show. bad. <sighs> I, 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 well, no, I don't think it's I good. Maybe it. I don't think it's Wait. bad, but I don't think it's I good. It. It's cool. I enjoyed it. Yeah. They're driving around in Vanishing uh, You enjoyed Point. it because it's mostly the movie. I know. Yeah. That's okay. fine, but that doesn't make it... Okay. Travis Legler says, it's crazy to think that this type of car revolution talking about Vanishing Point will never happen again. To see all the amazing types of muscle cars that were made, funnily enough, it's generally accepted that the 1964 Pontiac GTO was the first muscle car in American showrooms created by John DeLorean. Mm. He's been called the grandfather of muscle. And when Pontiac had a reputation for fast cars, it was because of a lot of decisions that he made. There you go. There you go. All these guys end up somewhere else and they start their own company. Oh, yeah. Like McLaren, Bruce mm -hmm. McLaren. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh and then yeah. we got McLaren cars Tra all over the place. Yeah. Travis will find any excuse to talk about the DeLorean. He will. <laughs> Whether it be the car or the man, he will find a way. <laughs> well, thank you all very much for writing in. We appreciate it. Now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie. And Sonia, yeah, starting with Colin. Oh, boy. You're going to go first tonight. What did you think about 2002's Crazy Insomnia? Uh, I loved this movie uh, the moment I first saw it, but then I was predisposed to because I loved the... A Norwegian version. Um, uh, to be fair, though, did you I've see only, that before this? I saw it before ah, this, okay. and uh, I was going to say, to be fair, I have never gone back to it. I saw that one, and then this one took its place. You know, it was like uh, this is the one I go back to. Okay, I was actually. Um, I don't actually think I had told you this, but after watching Oppenheimer, I was like, you know, I want to watch a Christopher Dolan movie. And I'm like, you know, the one I really want to see is Insomnia, you know, uh -huh. and then you brought it to the show. So this is great. I yeah. was like crossing one off. I'm like, hey, I get to watch it again. I've been wanting to bring it for a while. And this seemed like a good time to do mm -hmm. it. So. Mm -hmm. It's a great character study. I mean, it's one of those things. I guess I always have a problem. Uh, you know, with movies that are generally regarded, I think is good because mm -hmm. it's like, unless you have like a unique perspective on them, it's hard to talk about them, you know, because yes. what are you going to say? You're just right. going to It's good. Yeah, well, it's yeah. good. Yeah. It's that's, awesome. why, that's why we can't bring Halloween. You're just like, yeah. you know, those, those certain movies are just like, yeah, it's good, obviously. Like, yeah. we, there's not yeah. much argument against it. Yeah. And it feels like all the like accolades have already been spent. I'm like, what are you going to say? It's like Al Pacino's great. He's phenomenal. He's great. <laughs> Robin Williams is great. Yeah. Hillary Swank is great. Mm -hmm. Christopher Nolan's great. The mm -hmm. cinematography is great. It's like, mm -hmm. this is a really good movie. If you haven't seen it, then you're missing out. Uh, personally, I just kind of like these uh, police procedurals like this and the, um, the uh, you know, the interesting, I guess, having it take place in an interesting location that also kind of ties into the central character's uh, mental state, you yes. know, is, is an interesting aspect to it. Yeah, I love the movie. Um, I love it. That's it's all great. you got to say. That's all you got to say. It's one of the If you haven't seen this in the Christopher Nolan filmography. It gets forgotten a lot. It gets forgotten it, a lot. It does. Does it? Yeah. I, I don't I, think I, following gets forgotten. Is this one? Forgotten, but this but is a remake, so I think people discount it a lot because he didn't write it because it's a remake. And it's the only movie of his he didn't write. Ooh. So it, mm. I think it gets like, yeah, it's good, but it's a remake. It's a screenwriter. It's Hillary. Uh, Hillary. Yep. You're going to have this in a minute. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. 
Screenplay I think play by Hilary Seitz, S E I T Z. Adapting the original Norwegian mm-hmm. movie, but still, yeah. it's, uh, I think, as a, you know, adapting that movie, it, the graft fits really mm-hmm. well. Um, I also, uh, you know, I, I like the new, um, the newer Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, the Fincher oh, yeah. version. Yes. Like, I had a similar thing mm-hmm. with that. It's like I saw the original Swedish one. I saw the Fincher one. I'm like, okay, that the Fincher one's the one I go back to. Yep, same. This is Insomnia is the one I go back mm-hmm. to of the two. So I don't know, but you guys ever seen The Vanishing? No, I either not. version of it. I think I've seen. I've seen the new bad, one. Bad, allegedly. It's not bad. It's the same it. movie, but okay. it changes the ending. Oh, okay. So it's which is ending? Is that the one where the guys well, no, no, can't should, be? We, don't talk about. We yeah. should okay. bring it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Kiefer Sutherland is in the okay. American one, but the, the director yeah. did both of them. Gotcha. Yeah. Actually, the same guy who directed The Grudge directed Juwan, so that was another case huh. of like, okay. you yeah. know. Okay. But don't the, talk about it. We'll bring that one. Yeah, The Vanishing was the same guy did it in, you know, I can't remember where that was from. Oh. And American. I'm like, what are you doing? You've never noticed in the seven years she's been here that she has a freak show doll? Oh, yeah, yeah. What is this freak show doll? It's like cradle when it's my pig. Like, I yeah. didn't know you had a special <laughs> doll. Oh, yeah. look at my head with a body and some less. <laughs> All right, well, Holly, what did you okay. think of Insomnia? This was your first time watching. This oh, was, first that's, time. That's what I was going to say. I think this is a forgotten movie because I had never seen this, and I mm-hmm. consider myself a Christopher Nolan fan, mm-hmm. and I had just never watched this. So, um, yeah, I thought this was a spectacular movie. Um, and I agree. Watching this, I was like, this is a fucking great movie. What are we going to talk about? Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously we talked about Mrs. Doubtfire. But <laughs> <laughs> no, yes. but there were, there, there's so, obviously there's so much to talk about this movie. Um, but it's it, it's fucking spectacular. I think the writing is amazing. Um, it's it's a beautiful movie. I mean, you guys already know I have a you know soft spot for um, that type of scenery. I loved my trip to Alaska. And, and even though it was filmed in Canada... It does look like Alaska. It looked like not the, one moose. Which I'm <laughs> not one dis- moose. I'm disappointed. Not one moose, but okay. Right. Like even I, I thought that during one of the car scenes without Pacino, we get a moose. But you, should yeah, you guys thought when he was faking out hitting that semi that he was gonna hit a moose. And I was like, I wish, but no. <laughs> you should have, because I mean, they're everywhere up there. Yep. I saw like five. <laughs> but um, no, I, it's it's a beautiful movie. The scenery is spectacular. It is true to what Alaska looks like. Um, I went to a small town called Seward and that reminded me of this small town. So I, I, I loved the scenery. I think it's perfect. Um, yeah, this is a great fucking movie. I really liked it a lot. I, I will, I'll rewatch this again mm-hmm. for sure. Um, I think everyone's doing an amazing job. Robin Williams, dude. I'm Crush just, yeah. ugh. Mm-hmm. I'm still just so gutted that we lost him. He mm-hmm. was such an amazing person and he was such a good actor. Um, yeah. Al Pacino is fantastic. I don't have anything bad to say about this movie. I loved it. It's awesome. John. Yeah. I don't think there's uh, much um, bad you can say about this movie. Cinematography is very good. Uh, the acting I think is, is top notch from everybody involved with this. Um, the editing is uh, very interesting throughout. Um, I'd only seen this once before and probably when it originally came out in 2002. So it's been 21 years, Jesus, 21 years since I've seen this. Um, it's as good today as it was back then. And, uh, yeah, you should definitely watch it again. It does fall into that category where it's not, uh, maybe not forgotten, but not as talked about as, you know, yeah. Christopher Nolan's other movies. Cause mm-hmm. he, has, he has so many good ones. Right. But, and he has gone like bigger and spectacle mm-hmm. and story and where he goes with it. This seems, I mean, a, like a smaller movie at that mm-hmm. point. And because it is a remake and everything, but it's still like one of his best movies. So I will obviously recommend insomnia. Mm-hmm. I had a very good time mm-hmm. rewatching it tonight. Michaela, take us home. Um, the thing I love about Christopher Nolan movies is that they usually make me cry and they make <laughs> me think at the same time. Mm-hmm. And um, I love that about his movies. I love knowing how, like, it's kind of cathartic. Like, I went into Interstellar being like, I know I'm going to cry watching this movie. I just know it. And I sure did, like, three <laughs> times in that movie. But it also, like, challenged my thought, you know? And I love that about his movies. And he's just, like, I mean, he was a formative director for me, as, I, as I'm sure he was for a lot of people. But, like, I was 18 when The Dark Knight came out. So, like... That was, like, the first time I learned that, like, movies could have, like, deeper meaning and subtext. Like, I learned about subtext in movies through Christopher Nolan. Like, in I, a Batman you know, yeah. movie. Yeah, and so I, like, I'll always be excited for everything he does, and I'll watch everything he does because of that. I just, 
war movies in general don't draw me to anybody. So, but like, I just want him to get back to the weird cerebral shit, even if it is not good, like Tenet. <laughs> um, do like a small movie, like The Prestige again. Yeah, do a small thriller again. Yes. Do it. Do a small serial killer. The Prestige. Again. Yeah. The Prestige is my favorite Nolan movie. It, it I, might I, be my I favorite too. Did I had to do like a list of his before I when I was doing my notes for the show and just kind of was shuffling a lot because they're all so good that like there really isn't a bad one. It's just ones I engage with less. I would sure. say. Um, but I mean, no, this this I wish people knew more about this one because it is him doing like a serial killer thriller drama and. That's what I want to see every director I love do. So, <laughs> I mean, you got to see it because, and I mean, just look at the cast alone and the director, that should be all you need mm-hmm. to see it. It's, I'm sad that it's kind of been overshadowed because like Memento was before it yeah. and then Dark or Batman Begins was not long after it. So it kind of got sandwiched between two big things for him. So everyone remembers Memento. No one remembers Insomnia, you know, like. So watch Insomnia. Definitely recommend it. It's a good time. I like it better than Memento. I do, too. So do I. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Memento is solid. Don't get us yeah. wrong. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I'm not saying it's bad. Yeah. yeah. It's, and there is no bad Christopher. No, Nolan it's just game. levels of better. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. It's ones I watch more frequently than others, yes. you know? I like all the Skittles. Exactly. You know? Yeah, I like them all. Yeah. But Cherry is my favorite. Mm-hmm. Right. This one's, uh, yeah. Some of them are just orange. Yeah. And yeah. some of them are purple. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and we go from there. Yep. Well, you it's just universal. Grab a eat them all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, well, I mean, that, that is like a universally acclaimed uh, movie on the Saturday Night Free Show. Oh. And by listening to this show, that means you're contractually obligated to watch Insomnia. Mm-hmm. Stay, so. Yeah. Un, yeah. You have to stay up until you watch it. Yes. Specifically for this one. Yes. See, so we need no to, sleeping until you watch this. But we need to get the dissenting opinion. That, I mean, that, that would be what would be interesting Probably. is the person who hates insomnia. Like, why? Why do you? you know? <laughs> I'm going <gonna, laughs> to challenge you right now. If someone out there hates it, tell us why. Right. I, mean, I not, want to right. know why. And this is not a like, ah, I don't pay attention to it. I don't like it. Hates it. Like, you yeah. have to have yeah. a strong yeah. opinion in the opposite and in the yeah. negative. I could see someone who likes The Machinist being like, you know what the better sleep deprived movie is? You know, like The Machinist. Everyone yeah. talks about it. But really I. That one's way more well And I'm known. okay with that opinion as long as you have actually seen this. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. You can't Let's just say the machine recently. is better. The machine also is good. recently. Yeah. It is yeah. good. Yeah. We're not saying that. But yeah. Oh, no, yeah. we love the I want to, like, watching this, I'm like, I want to watch the machine. I want yeah. you to be passionately against this movie, and I want to know why. Yes. Yeah. Like, my yeah. feelings about Diane Keaton. Hater. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> First Wives Club? Can we make exceptions? I like that movie. That's I just don't movie. like her. She flails too much. Yeah, she, yeah. She's, she's yeah. so flaily. Yeah. She can't right. stand it. She's not a good actress. I'm sorry, she's not. Ouch. There you go. Well, I mean, I, I, I have nothing to argue with, so yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Father of the Bride's the exception. Father of the Bride, but she's toned down. Because she's a mom in that. She's, she's a mom She's just a that, nice yeah. mom. Yes. Sorry. Tangent. No, I'm all that's about tangents tonight. I'm sorry. All right, well, Just next week, my childhood. <laughs> we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by... Colin, what are we watching next week? Uh, we're going to go back to the 90s. We're going to look really? at the very overlooked uh, genre of super independent oh, filmmakers. Oh, oh, oh. The guys who are making Super 8 movies uh, uh, in the 1990s. And this is, uh, as an example, we're going to watch a movie called Leaf Jonker's Darkness. It's a vampire movie that none of you guys have heard Jesus of. Jesus Christ. Right. I'm, I'm, like, like, I'm yeah. determined <laughs> to find movies that you can't find streaming anywhere. So, Why do uh, I feel like this is going to be really Leaf easy? Jonkers Darkness. It's Darkness. a vampire movie. So is it called Darkness and yes. Leaf Jonkers is the guy who made it? I don't it? want to just say Darkness because sure, that's the right, worst title no. ever. But Leaf no, no, no. Leaf, <laughs> Jonker, no. Leaf Jonkers Darkness <laughs> is the way the to go. Well, that is, that is the title no, of that's it. The worst. That's the I think he was great. going yeah. with like a John Carpenter Leaf thing. Leaf Jonkers right? sure. sounds like a joke. <laughs> Leaf Jonkers <laughs> Darkness. I thought he was having a stroke for a second. <laughs> like, let me tell you something about Leaf right, Jonkers. Yeah, give me a word I understand. Well, this should be interesting. So we hope that you'll join us. nothing about this. I can't wait until you know everybody does their homework and orders their copy of the okay. uh, the movie so okay. they can watch it uh that's next week on the saturday night freak show we hope you'll join us and until then boils and ghouls the basement is going dark